uh, our next speaker is uh, Leon Jean, and uh, the uh, title of the talk is uh, Symplectic Structures on the Modular Spaces of uh, Clouds and uh, Bundles. So, uh, uh, please start. Okay, yeah, so thanks for organizers for organizing this conference. Yeah, I'd like to thank the organizers for organizing this conference. Of course, it would be better to have it in real space and time, but virtual is also not that bad. So the title of my talk is slightly off the topic of the conference, but in fact, this symplectic structures I will discuss, they're somehow related to integrable systems and, and they appear in some in in some other forms and the this subject I, I like to have some historic introduction so from several years Igri Krichever and I we were discussing these topics because there are several approaches to the modular spaces of Riemann surfaces and vector bundles for instance for the integrable systems Igor has an approach which uses algebraic geometry, Turing parameters for vector bundles, lux operators on algebraic curves. Then for modular spaces, he also has a nice approach in rhythm theory using deformation of Riemann surfaces. So that's integrable systems side. From the point of view of complex and algebraic geometry of these modular spaces, more natural is a complex analytic approach, which is kind of more traditional for analyst complex geometries and partially algebraic geometries. And our idea was to reconcile these two approaches and see how they are related. Though in this talk, I couldn't explain this to you, but I will review in a concise and very simple form what is the complex analytic slash algebraic geometry approach to the modular spaces of curves and bundles. And this would be really very simple. And like in old papers by Andre Turin, I'd like to use parallel text. So we'll have a parallel description of both objects of their structures in a very simple manner. It would be pretty much elementary because certain things needs to be clarified. I will emphasize the things which kind of are rather known to the specialist, but I like to make them very clear. So this was like a preface. So let's discuss. So we start with the very basics. So we deal with algebraic curves or compact Riemann surfaces. The, main, the basic result is the uniformization theorem, which says that every compact Riemann surface of genus greater than one is represented as a quotient of Lobachevsky plane by a Fuchsian group which acts discreetly on the Lobachevsky plane, which is the upper half plane, which is the upper half plane of the complex variable, Z. And gamma is a fuchsian group, which is isomorphic to the fundamental group of a surface. Second main object is, consists of stable vector bundles of fixed rank and degree over a given Riemann surface. So I won't de describe what stability means, it's rather well known. And this can be done for bundles, what I, am, I will be discussing can be done for bundles of any degree, but for simplicity, we'll consider the case of degree zero. Then the analog of a Fuchsian uniformization theorem is Narasimhan Sishadri theory, which says that every stable holomorphic, of course, stable holomorphic vector bundle of degree zero and rank n is, obt is obtained by the following construction. It's there exists an irreducible representation 
row of fundamental group unitary, such that the bundle E is complex analytically isomorphic as a quotient bundle. We take a trivial bundle of a Lobachevsky plane, just a product, and we take a quotient by the action of a fundamental group on a product of the upper half plane and complex vector space. So this formula specifies precisely, this formula specifies how the group acts, how the fundamental group acts. It acts by deck transformation on the plane, Lobachevsky plane, and via representation on the Euclid, on the complex vector space. So that's the first part. And the second part, which is extremely important for modular spaces of vector bundles will be, it says that two such bundles are isomorphic only when representations, unit representations row one and row two are equivalent. So that's the basic outline. And this construction quotient bundle was first introduced by Andre Weil in 1930s in his well-known paper of matrix devices, which also was discussed by Andrei Turin in his papers in our speaking. But now, now let's introduce immediately Teichmuller space and the modular space. This, the most straightforward introduction is through character varieties. So this is a standard construction when you have a group, two groups, then you consider first representation space, homomorphism from one group to another, and then a character variety, which is a quotient of these homomorphisms by the conjugation of the target group. And of course, this needs to, this as a variety could be very singular, one need to consider stable points. So that's a very general construction. Of course, it becomes meaningful when one group is a fundamental group, so discrete with discrete topology. And the other group is continuous group, say a Lie group. And then we consider homomorphisms from pi one of a surface, or could, could be any other topological space, but Riemann topological surface is the most oriented, closed topological surface is the, the most basic example. And the group J could be reductive, Lie group. Complex or real, both cases are fine. And then Tachmuller space, the easiest definition would be it's a homomorphisms from pi one to Möbius group, PSL to R, quotient by the conjugations by PSL to R, and we can see the stable points, only those homomorphisms which are defined, which give Fuchsian representation of pi one. This looks rather artificial, why you put Fuchsian from the very beginning. But there is a well-known theorem by Bill Goldman, actually it was his PhD thesis, which says, Take this group PSL to R and consider all and consider the representation variety, all homomorphisms of pi one to G. Then it has several connected components. Then Goldman theorem says that connected components of this earlier class 2G minus 2, that's the maximal earlier class from minus this number to this number that this connected component consists precisely of, of Fuchsian representations. So that's a remarkable result. So Fuchsian could be removed and saying you can see the connected component with earlier class 2G minus 2. Then of course, you can develop the whole theory of character varieties, you elementary compute the dimension over real, real dimension. And then there is a modular group which since you have conjugation, action by conjugation, the quotient reflects only the inner automorphisms of pi one. And then the quotient group, all automorphisms by inner is the modular group, which acts on the Teichmuller space. 
So that's one. Then since tangent space is a character variety, it automatically comes with a symplectic form, Goldman symplectic form. We'll discuss, I will discuss it later in more detail, but that's the outline. For the modular spaces of vector bundles, situation is exactly the same. You can see the, the same character variety, but now you replace non-compact group PSL to R by a unitary group. And instead of using, you can see the all unitary representations irreducible. So subscript zero stands for irreducible representations. Then again, this becomes a nice manifold, real analytic so far, everything is real. And then you compute this dimension, it's again even. And now important remark that due to Narasimhan Sishanti theory, when two bundles are isomorphic, if and only if corresponding representations are isomorphic, unitary and irreducible, this says that there is no modular group for this character variety. So the character varieties look same, but in one case it's non-compact, the group G is non-compact, in other case it's compact. In one case you have a modular group, so Tejmer space admits a further quotient by the modular group. We get the actual modular space of curves, which is an or default. In the case of bundles, there is no analog of Tejmer space, only the modular space. This is due to the fact that the target group is compact. So that's very general outline, but this is kind of the easiest. We don't do any deformation theory. We didn't discuss Teichmuller theory per se, quasi-conformal mappings, all this stuff. So looks simple. Then, of course, one needs to, to explain what is a Goldman symplectic form. This is very beautiful construction due to Bill Goldman. Namely, you can consider, so let me outline it. And, so we start with arbitrary reductive in group. Then the character variety, as I said, is a representation variety of pi one comma morphous into this group, quotient by conjugation. But of course, one needs to consider stable points. Otherwise, because this quotient is very bad as a variety, it's even non house dog. But if one can see the stable points in the appropriate sense, then the quotient becomes a manifold. And then it's easily, it's rather relatively easy to describe corresponding tangent spaces to character variety. They are described in terms of a group cohomology. Namely, there is a representation of pi one into a Lie group G. Therefore, pi one acts on a Lie algebra by conjugate, by via adjoint representation. Therefore, Lie algebra of G is a pi one module with this adjoint action. And then you consider group cohomology with coefficients. H upper one is a group cohomology of a group pi one with coefficients, which is the module G which is denoted by this symbol. So G adjoint row. So pi one acts on G by adjoint representation. And then the formula for them. Then one can easily compute dimension of the, it, just group cohomology. So just, there is no, so just pure algebraic, no. Then one can define in a rather nice way, one can define the two form, the skew symmetric two form on tangent spaces. Namely, you take two cohomology classes, we represent them by chi one, we represent them by chi one and chi two, two cohomology classes, two tangent vectors. You can take any co-cycles which represent them. And then you take the cup product in terms of which belongs to H2. Then you, with coefficients in the Lie algebra cross itself, 
then using B invariant non-degenerate bilinear form on the reductive. Since there is a reductive Lie group, you turn this Lie algebra values to co-cycle into just, just group to co-cycle, and then you evaluate it on a fundamental class, which is realized in terms of a group homology. So there is a so that's very simple definition, very basic, although a lot of isomorphisms have been used in this definition. So we represent co-cycles by in pure algebraic way. And so fundamental class of the surface, which belongs to simplicial homology, we represent it using group homology, which requires, and then there is a nice way. So this is very abstract and this works actually in, a, in, in pretty general setting. But now how to specialize all this to the case when pi one is a fundamental group of a surface. And for this, there is a nice machinery invented by Ralph Fox in the 50s, which is called free Fox, free differential calculus. Fox actually was a PhD advisor of Jack Milner when he was his student. So this Fox differential calculus is very simple. So it kind of replaces the product rule, D is a differentiation, by a lazy kind of product rule. So derivative of a product is derivative of a first factor multiplied by one, because epsilon is augmentation map. So if B is just a generator, epsilon of B is one. Then you multiply, you apply derivative to the second factor and multiply the first element by it. So, and this of course is very nice when A and B are elements in the group ring of a free group. So our group pi one is three modulus a single relation written here. So this is pi one modulus single relation. And then there is a nice computation for the fundamental cycle, how to represent fundamental cycle of a topological surface in terms of a group homology. The answer is very simple. And in fact, it should be written in any algebraic topology textbook, but it is hidden as some exercise into Brown's book on group cohomology. There is like a monograph on group cohomology where this is hidden as one of the exercises. And this is really a nice exercise. Then using this representation, Bill Goldman writes this really beautiful form. So what it is. So we take two core cycles, we evaluate it on elements, on generators of a fundamental group. For instance, here, chi two is evaluated on a generator AK, but chi one is evaluated by the following, is the following construction. You take the product of commutators. You don't impose relation that this product is one. First you take it, then you differentiate it with respect to AK using Fox calculus. Then, and after differentiation, you set that this product of commutators equals to one. And then you apply anti-involution. This hashtag means anti-involution in a group ring. So you get a linear combination of generators with integer k coefficients. Hashtag means it's the result is linear combination where the elements are inverted. There is raising to power negative one. And then angle brackets means applying B invariant. These values are Lie algebra values. You apply B invariant for form, killing form, and then you get a number. So, and that's the value. That's the value of a two form. That's what Goldman 
Giska somehow. And then, of course, this formula is very used. In fact, people rather try to avoid it, but in fact, it can be used to prove many things. For instance, it's pure algebraically, you can prove that this form is obviously skew symmetric. Then non degenerate this can be proved nicely. And also using certain double complex and more, more Cartan forms on Lie group G, you can prove that this form is closed. All this is very state using just this forms. I put them in a box like in a calculus textbook because this is really calculus. You may say it's maybe advanced calculus. So that's the way of getting symplectic structures in a pure algebraic fashion. Now there is another way of getting these symplectic structures in a for, as certain Keller forms of a certain symplectic forms of Keller forms. For this, one needs to use the complex structure. And now complex structure is defined in a very parallel setting. So to define a complex structure on these varieties, character varieties, we need to one specify what are holomorphic functions. This is done by specifying Cauchy-Riemann operators. In the case of curves, it's a standard d bar minus mu d, where mu is a Beltrami differential, and minus one, one form on x, it means that it has the type mu d z bar over d z. And then holomorphic function satisfy Beltrami equation, written here, Beltrami equation. For the case of bundles, Cauchy-Riemann operator is simply d bar minus m. It's just zero one component of a curvature, oh, sorry, of a connection, connection form. Here m, capital M, is endomorphism valued zero one form on x. And then holomorphic functions satisfy this simple d bar equation. This is a partial derivative. So functions depend on z and z bar. Now in defining in this way, we can talk about deformation theory, like each Beltrami differential mu or each capital mu determine a deformation of a curve or a vector band. This deformation could be equivalent. So the or rather lead to a trivial deformation. And non-trivial deformations are specified by corresponding cohomology group. And it's better to realize them, for instance, Beltrami differentials, non-trivial deformations are specified by harmonic minus one, one forms on, on a Riemann surface. Harmonic with respect to hyperbolic metric on X. And so this is like harmonic forms. So you have zero one harmonic forms with on X with coefficients in a tangent bundle in or rather canonical class minus one. And then you endow X and T of X with matrix, hyperbolic metric and the metric it induces. And then you can talk about harmonic forms. Then Similar for the case of bundles, it's even easier. You take harmonic zero one forms with values with in endomorphisms. It means just anti-holomorphic and forms. Then one describes holomorphic tangent space, but this spaces of harmonic forms are naturally holomorphic tangent spaces to both varieties and the duals by Kadai Reserve duality say are holomorphic cotangent spaces. For the modular space of curves, this is this is the space of holomorphic quadratic differentials. For the modular space of bundles, this cotangent space is called nowadays the space of Higgs fields. 
Now, one can do even better for tight space, one can introduce local complex coordinates in a rather explicit way. They are called Bears coordinates. And coordinate charts are very kind of nice. Each point has its own neighborhood with a complex analytic coordinates. And so in the intersection, they are related obviously by holomorphic function. So each point is covered by a coordinate chart. That's what described by Bears in a very beautiful way. You need, you start with a Beltrami differential, which harmonic Beltrami differential is defined on the Riemann surface. If you use uniformization theory, this differential will be defined only on the upper half plane. But Beltrami equation to be solved need to be considered on the whole complex plane. So you need to extend it from the upper half plane to the lower half plane. The most natural way which preserves such that the corresponding solution preserves the real axis is by the symmetry, by reflection. So you consider the following Beltrami equation. So for function f with upper indices, epsilon mu, you can see this satisfies Beltrami equation where coefficient in the upper half plane is epsilon times mu, coefficient in the lower half plane is its reflection. Take mu in the reflected point, complex country. Then the result of this is a new starting from a Fuchsian group gamma, which was uniformizing a Riemann surface X. You get a family of Fuchsian groups, gamma, epsilon, mu. This is a family. And so, and they define a neighborhood of a given Fuchsian group. Very important. This family is not holomorphic, but epsilon determines a holomorphic coordinates. So these are called Bears coordinates. For the bundles, long time ago, Peter Zogoff and I, we made the same construction. You can see the, this, you can see the PD of this sort. Width, and we can consider only those solutions of this PD. It has plenty of solutions. You can multiply from the left by anything which is holomorphic in Z. And we consider only those solutions, a family of those, such that they transform with a new representation row of which depends on epsilon, which is unit and irreducible. And this construction is kind of here, we don't have a lower half plane. Like in the case of a Riemann surfaces, we have a Riemann surface and its mirror image, which will be used. Riemann surface lives in, in the upper half plane, and its mirror image in the lower half plane. For the case of vector bundles, we one would try to think about a mirror image, but this is more mute. So, but still, this equation, if you normalize capital F of epsilon at some point, has a unique solution satisfying these properties where representation rho epsilon is unitary and reduced. And therefore it defines a, a deformation of a stable bundle of degree zero. And this is the analog of Bears coordinates. Again, these representations rho, they are not holomorphic in epsilon, but epsilon themselves determine a complex coordinate. Now we can discuss Keller forms. Here, the situation is kind of simple because if we, we already have holomorphic tangent and cotangent spaces. They are defined using Hodge theory, they are harmonic. Therefore, these spaces carry a natural inner product determined by natural inner product, and we define Hermitian matrix in each tangent space, as for Teichmann space, as and same for the modular space of vector bundles. Of course, it's a key result that this matrix are killer. So this requires certain form of deformation theory. 
and in particular this bears coordinates for Tashmere space and their analog for vector bundles are used for a simple proof that corresponding metrics are really kept. This and this matrix define called on the modular space as well Peterson matrix introduced by Andrea Veil and on the modular space of bundles. This was first introduced by Narasim and then by Atiyabot. So I always call it Narasiman, Narasiman Atiyabot matrix because Narasiman introduced it in 1970 or so. Atiyabot is 1982. And so this, and this defines new type of symplectic matrix symplectic forms on these varieties. Well, Peterson symplectic form and Narasiman Atiyah bot. And we also have pure algebraic topology symplectic forms on these spaces, defined namely Goldman symplectic form for each of these spaces. And of course, there is a very simple thing, which is essentially just using its straightforward generalization of Riemann bilinear relations, it uses what is called eichler shimura periods of forms of weight, of automorphic forms of weight four, the quadratic differentials, and vector valued automorphic forms of weight two, or vector valued differentials, holomorphic or anti-holomorphic. And then this simple period relations show that on Dijkman space, well, Peterson symplectic form is golden symplectic form. So it's nature, it's pure, it doesn't depend on the choice of a complex structure. On the modular space, same holds that Goldman symplectic form, coefficient minus four, just different normalizations. Is, is Narasiman Atiyah bot symplectic form. Both of these theorems attributed to Goldman in his classic paper, Bill Goldman proved the first one. The second theorem, although in folklore it's attributed to Bill Goldman, there is a very simple proof. I gave it in the paper I will refer late, very soon. So that's this type of a structure. Now there is another interesting construction, which again goes in parallel which is that you can consider, well, it, it has a classical meaning, actually. You can, in one case, you can consider on Riemann surfaces, you can consider second order, ordinary differential equations, which kind of should be covariant in some appropriate sense in terms of local coordinates. On vector bundles, of course, it's natural to consider first order linear differential equations, of course, which are related to, uh, to connections. And these two, second order and first order, are, of course, projective connections on Riemann surfaces and ordinary, or in old terminology, they are called affine connections in vector particles. So now, what is this? And this allows to define affine bundles over the modular spaces. So the first one, it's with curly P. It's holomorphic affine bundle, model over cotangent bundle, two touching space. And this is its fibers at each Riemann surface, at each point, which is the Riemann surface, are holomorphic projective connections. These are the objects of the form written here. This is written in terms of the local coordinates. So the data R for each local coordinate transform in appropriate way according to a projective connection. Now it's used to call, now it's called OPER, but I prefer to use projective connection because somehow new terminology, OPER canceled the classic terminology projective connection. I think it doesn't make sense to use the new terminology. So it's projective connection for the modular space of bundles. It's 
simpler. You have curly A, it's holomorphic a fine bundle of the modular space modeled over is a fine bundle over a vector bundle, which is a cotangent bundle, holomorphic cotangent bundle, T star of N. And the fibers of this affine bundle are zero curvature connections, which are compatible with the complex structure. Maybe these are connections nabla, which say let's write in the form D plus A, where A has two components, one zero and zero one. Component zero one is zero. So it's just compatible with the complex structure in the bundle. And component one zero is such that it's, that it's curvature, total curvature is zero. So it's holomorphic. So zero curvature holom connections. These bundles admit natural canonical sections, namely fusion uniformization of a Riemann surface. And Narasim and Sishadri is uniformization of, of vector bundles, produce naturally a section by the fall in the following way, in the following way. So you have by Narasim, by fusion uniformization, we have a covering map. Such that the group of deck transformations is the fusion group. Then the projective connection would be Schwartz and derivative of the inverse map. Inverse map is multivalued, but this multivalueness is killed by the Schwartz and derivative. And so for each covering of a Riemann surface by a plane domain with a whose group of deck transformations is fractional union, we get a projective connection. Fuchsian is the best, and then we get a natural canonical section, Fuchsian projective connection. Of course, if you choose it as a base point using this canonical section, you can identify, identify projective bundle with a vector bundle. Whether it's holomorphic or not, we'll discuss in a second. In the same manner, the Racine and Sishadri theorem determines a canonical section in the bundle, in the trivial, in the bundle, trivial bundle, HN, you consider connection D plus zero, just, just the run differential. Then projection, then the, when you take the quotient, this becomes some connection in a holomorphic vector bundle in a stable bundle. This is an, an Racine and Sishadri connection. And so we have two canonical sections. Then of course, it's a very simple and very basic fact. We, it's very old that we, 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 we proved it with Spitazograph long ago for both cases, that these sections are not holomorphic. That's clear. But in fact, what's kind of interesting, the D by derivative gives corresponding symplectic forms in both cases. So this, uh, so you may say how you can get a D by derivative of a section of an affine band, but this is very simple. You, you can define it, you can choose locally, any local holomorphic section. Then by, then the difference, say if you see, connection minus some holomorphic projective connection becomes a holomorphic quadratic differential, becomes a section of T star over some neighborhood of integer. Then D bar operator is, can be easily applied. And therefore, this is how del bar operator is defined. It doesn't depend obviously on the choice of any local holomorphic section. So this is well defined. So you can differentiate affine objects with in a bar direction. And you get back this Val Peterson and NAB symplectic forms. So Fuchsian and the Racine and Sishadi sections give identification, but only real analytic. It is not a complex analytic identification. So that's 
kind of important to know. Then finally, another natural object which is defined is the monodromy map, which is just the monodromy of projective connection or the Riemann Hilbert correspondence, which is an, an, a monodromy of a corresponding connection. This is a map of corresponding affine bundles to the character varieties of a complexified, complexified Lie groups. For the case of curves, you complexify G and you get PSL to C, the full members group. For the case of bundles, you complexify unitary group and you get general linear group over complex, with complex coefficients. So that's, these are all the maps. Now we'd like to ask the following question, whether you can identify this affine bundles of projective structures and of affine connections with corresponding cotangent spaces in holomorphy. And here we, we have a main difference between Teichmuller spaces and modular spaces of stable vector bundles. Namely, a fine band of projective connections over T dream has a family of global holomorphic sections parameterized by touch mirror space itself and given by the Bears simultaneous uniformization theory. And these are called quasi fuxian sections. You denote QF. There are a lot of them. Local construction is very nice. You start with a pair, a Riemann surface, and a smearing image. So you have upper half plane and a lower half plane. And then you deform the Riemann surface, but you keep its mirror image fixed. This is achieved, that's the Bears construction, but in a very beautiful way. That's what Bears invented. You consider the following Beltrami equation. You, in the upper half plane, you take the same Beltrami differential, epsilon times mu, but you extend it in a trivial fashion by the lower half plane. Of course, these extensions may not agree on a real line, but it's a set of measures zero. It's of no importance for the Beltrami equation. Then still you get a deformation. You get this low F, now, with lower indices means quasi fuxian deformations, and then corresponding group gamma with lower indices, epsilon is a quasi fuxian group. And it obviously depends holomorphically on epsilon. That's the way to construct holomorphic families of Riemann surfaces. In general, you can start with a pair X and a mirror image of some other image surface, say X, Y bar, and then you, you keep Y bar fix and you vary X. So that's basically in the same fashion. And then your corresponding fuxian, quasi fuxian group also have two domains of discontinuity, but they will be some, some domains in a complex plane which are bounded by some Jordan curve. There is one domain that has, there will be two components. In the first quotient of the first component by the quasi fuxian group gives you a new surface, a deformation X epsilon mu of a Riemann surface X. Whereas quotient of another component of, by the same quasi fuxian group will give you the same Riemann surface y back. There is bar over y. I need to put bar to be pedantic. My needs to be bar. So you can realize Riemann surface as a quotient, of course, in infin infinity many. So, and then one can define a quasi fuxian projective connection, which was explained before this definition. And this is the way of defining a lot of holomorphic sections. And so now a fine bundle A over N has no holomorphic set, global holomorphic sections. This is seen from namely if we have 
well, it's kind of tricky. It's so let me explain because this is the main difference between Taishmir space and modular space of boundaries. But if you pass from Taishmir space to modular space of curves, then there will be similar thing. But but let me explain because this is subtle algebra geometric issue. Because so suppose that there exists a global holomorphic section S of a fine bundle A, purely A. Then the difference in the Siemens Chicago and this section is a well-defined section of a cotangent bundle of A, and this D bar is a killer, is symplectic form of Narasiman Atiya bot method. So if such section exists, symplectic omega would be Dalbo exact, would be del bar exact. Its Dalbo class would be zero. If we would consider n modular space of vector bundles of rank n and degree d such that n and d are mutually prime, then the modular space is compact. And then by Hodge, theory, Dalbo exact means just the rank homology of omega is zero. But in this case, it is known by a tier bot that omega NAB is a generator of H upper to the rank. So it's a contradiction. If we can see the bundles of degree zero, then the modular space is not compact. And therefore, such simple argument doesn't work and so on. But one can show that it, it becomes more subtle. Now, similar thing happens for modular space of curves. If you consider modular space of curves, so you consider MJ, which is the quotient of a modular group. Then Fuchsian projective connection kind of is modular invariant, while Peterson's symplectic form is modular invariant. So all these objects exist on MG as an orbifold. And now theorem with Zogorf also exists on the orbifold. So D bar of S Fuchsian is omega while Peterson with a K fish, right? Then one can show that over MG, the affine bundle of projective connection has no holomorphic sections. This was proved by Nikolai Ivanov using, using the same argument. If there was a holomorphic section S, then while Peterson's symplectic form would be Dalbo exact. Its Dalbo class would be zero as it follows from our formula with Zograph. But modular space is not compact. You can try to compactify it, but it could be rather complicated. You need to do a lot of analysis. But then he created a very clever and beautiful argument. Modular space of curves contains plenty of curves inside. There is an immersion of a Riemann surface into modular space. Then you can pull back you can pull back the Val Peterson form on this on this symplectic, on this immersed Riemann surface, and then from condition, and then you can get a contradiction using Hodge theory because Riemann surface is compact. So basically, it's using compact to compact cycles inside modular space using realizing H2 of modular space in a better. And probably similar construction exists for vector bundles. But I, but that, that's the subtlety which one should keep in mind. But for touch modular space, things are plain and simple. But the modular space, Kolya Ivanov made a very clever argument. It's also, it was done For the modular space of bundles, I don't know whether such argument exists because it's. Well, I asked several experts, and you strangely enough, the homology ring of 
bundles of when modular space is non-compact for bundles of degree zero is not so well studied as the compact case, which was studied by Atia Bot and then many other people. Okay, so now then let's return. So we have this. Now, what about analog of Bers coordinates on the modular space? So then let me be more, we spent a lot of time discussing these elementary things, but let me say how to construct a new thing. It's so, one can also define plenty of local holomorphic sections in the case of bundles. Namely, we start with a given vector bundle, and a connection. This connection determines, has a holonomy. And therefore we can realize a bundle as a local system with respect to this holonomy. This holonomy is a homomorphism of pi into complexified Lie group. It's just some set of constant, constant transition functions of this bundle. Then, we consider the RAM cohomology for this local system. And instead of PD, we consider the OD of this form, which, which is normalized at some point. Then this OD defines a family of representations into JLNC of, of pi one. And this, this a family of representation is holomorphic in various coordinates. And obviously this is defined locally. And so in each, then with each of this family, we construct corresponding local system. And then this local system E of sigma with index mu, it's a stable vector bundle. Then it has a, and then it has a connection which is obtained from a trivial connection in a trivial bundle. So we get a family of holomorphic, of, of holomorphic connections, which depend holomorphically on moduli, so we can see. And so the, in this way, at each coordinate chart in the modular space, we have a holomorphic section. And then the holomorphic section depend on the choice of sigma, depend on the choice of a connection at the, at the origin of this coordinate. So we have, and this is what can be defined. And I call, like we call other connections quasi fuxian this let's call quasi-unitary quasi because they are kind of complexification of them. And then one can, if you have a global holomorphic section, you can identify your affine spaces with cotangent bundles. And you can pull back holomorphic symplectic form, Liouville symplectic form from a cotangent bundle to a bundle of radioactive structures. But say you use two sections, when are the pullbacks same? The answer is very simple, the pullback is same when the D of difference of these two sections give you is zero, when the sections are D closed, del closed. Likewise, if you have modular space of bundles over each coordinate chart, you have a holomorphic section. So you can pull back Liouville symplectic form over each chart. Then you may ask when these two local pullbacks define a global to form on curly edge. The answer is same when the difference on the intersection is del closed. Now, how to prove this? And in fact, there is a very interesting thing which was first discovered by Macmillan in 2000. And then Li Peng, Tio and I, we kind of generalized it and actually we had some ideas about it. And the idea is the following. Let's consider these two equations. The second one is our theorem with Zograph because quasi fuchsian inception is holomorphic. But the first one is a new thing. It's, it's a quasi fuchsian reciprocity, so, which says that the difference between fuchsian and quasi fuchsian connection is del exact. 
in particular, there, are, there is a unique fuchsin connection. There are several quasi fuchsin from this quasi fuchsin reciprocity, it follows that the difference between two quasi fuchsin connections is del closed. Therefore, this answer is used to show in directly that whatever quasi fuchsian section we use to pull back symplectic form, Liouville symplectic form, we get the same. And then same result holds for vector bundles. This is a recent result. And this still same thing. And the only difference is that well, there are some details of the proof. I will rather skip. And now what we can use. Now I would rather skip that. Now you can use this result to pull back, to pull back Liouville symplectic form to affine bundles. Now, in, in addition to that, we have a holonomy map, monodromy map or Riemann Hilbert correspondence of these affine bundles to character varieties. These character varieties carry Goldman form. Since these character varieties are now holomorphic, the corresponding Goldman form is holomorphic of type 2, 0. And you pull back these Goldman form, forms. And then you ask whether these pullbacks are the same. And then there is correspond for the Tajmeri space, there is a statement made by Kawai, and it's called Kawai theorem, but C4 for extra remarks, because he missed the quasi fuchsian reciprocity completely. And so his proof cannot be considered correct because the key point is missed. It says that pullback to a fine space of projective structures of the holomorphic Goldman form. And by the monodromy map is proportional, the square root of negative one, by the pullback of the Liouville symplectic form by the quasi fuchsian section. And then the same result holds for vector bundles. And if you take the pullback of holomorphic to if you have a pullback of curly A of the holomorphic Goldman form omega G on the character variety by the Riemann Hilbert correspondence, which I described, you can pull it back by a family of the local sections. Then this is proportional, is exact coefficient to the pullback of a holomorphic Liouville form, which is by the quasi fuchsian, which is determined by the quasi fuchsian sections. So since the time is almost over, let me, these are like the basic reference. So this is a McLuhan paper, really beautiful. Then this our paper with Tio, Li Peng Tio, where it is discussed. Then this is paper where you can prove the theorem, Kawai theorem in a much in a straightforward way. And this is the recent paper, this is the results about bundles which I discussed. And of course, to put them into perspective, same things with bundles, this pullback of Goldman form, they also appear in Igor Kritschewer old papers about Lux operators on algebraic curves. So the same in the same way. Okay, I'd, I'd rather stop. Thank you. Thank you for the nice talk. Uh, are there any questions? Also, uh, if no, uh, let's uh, thank the speaker again. And uh, uh, see you uh, tomorrow.